so today's session is uh, on uh, receiver operating curve roc analysis Rece receiver operating characteristics curve analysis and basically it's the uh, it's a one component of a diagnostic accuracy study uh, we will not cover uh, the diagnostic accuracy in detail because it has got a lot of other components also but uh, this session is uh, mainly focused on uh, how to decide a cutoff if you have got a series of value based uh, on that uh, goal standard. And uh, we will discuss basically three uh, uh, type of things. One is the uh, predictive model ROC. The second will be the uh, uh, continuous variable that is, that is maybe a cutoff. And third is the uh, value of a test. So these three things we uh, will learn how to decide a cutoff, how to do ROC analysis and the area under the curve, what is the interpretation? So good morning to all of you. And uh, I'm again saying good morning because I think few of you have joined late. So uh, to begin with, uh, just a few uh, concept, uh, I just want to convey this, that uh, basically if we have got a new tool, or an instrument or a new test value. And we have to decide based on that test value about the disease condition or the situation or the status of a patient. So for that, just see this picture for a few seconds. There are many cases in the population and that tool I have applied this tool on a randomly selected sample from the population. And these are the cases ID, which you can see here and the values. So that individual with the value is that value of a test in that individual. So looking at the value, can you tell that who is suffering from a disease and who is not? Yes or no? If I just, if I only know the value, like this person has 28, this person is 30, 29, 11, 24, etc. So just by seeing the value of a test, can we say that this person has disease? So yes, not known. Everybody said, no, you are right. We cannot say because we don't know the true status. We only know that value of a particular test in that individual where we have not decided any cutoff, we have not uh, did any analysis, no previous literature is available, or even if that literature is available, maybe that is on a different subsample. So I cannot say basically. So now, now you see this, this, the same individual. Now you know about the actual disease condition. So in this case, the person with the orange color or a peach color is a disease and the person with a green color is without a disease. So we know about the person who has the disease and who doesn't have the disease. In this case, now, can you imagine a cutoff value for my test in this hypothetical example? Just ponder for a few seconds. So yes, Praveen, uh, Ria, everybody is writing 20. So you can see here that the green person, all the green people, they've got a score less than 20. So like 10, 14, 7, 11, 17. And if you see the red, it has got a 21, 29, 22. So maybe that it may range from 18 to if I see in this, so that cutoff may range from 18 because there is no person here with 20 or 18 or 19. So that cutoff, I can say something that if it is more than 20, then it is a disease. And if it is less than like 20, then it has got no disease. So some hypothetical example, yes. Uh, seven, Ashish is writing seven. Seven would be cut off, no, because seven is green. So I, 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 he will be a healthy person and we know the actual status also. So he is a healthy person. So we can say that the person who has got seven 
so less than 20 if a person is getting so my question is that you know the actual disease status and then you have applied that new test and on that new test can you say about the value of the new test because if you see the previous example this one here you cannot say that who is suffering from disease and who is not because the actual disease status of that person is not known but if you know the disease status of a person through some gold standard then you can say that what is the cutoff value now see this situation from this hypothetical population if a person visited to you for a consultation and you suspected a condition x and advise the test and the test value comes as 22 so can you say that he is suffering from that particular disease x please write yes or no based on your previous answer if a person comes to you you ask for that test maybe that may be a tool or that may be a blood test or any other test and if the test value comes as 22 can you say that he is suffering from the condition x so praveen is writing not suffering as value is more than 20 but praveen we decided here based on this hypothetical actually this is a hypothetical example where we have decided that a person who has got a score of more than 20 you can see all the person has got more than 20 score and they are actually have got the disease so a person who has got more than 20 that particular value of the test he will be uh, i can say that he is having the disease so now the same example from this hypothetical example if a person visited you for consultation and you suspected x and advised the test and the test value comes as 16. so will you say that he is not suffering from condition x can you say that because we have set the cutoff there based on those pictures that more than 20 will be suffering from the disease there is a chance there is a probability and if it is less than 20 that person will not be having the disease so yes everybody aditi kokila everybody answered yes we can say that if the value is less than 20 like in this case 16 then he is not suffering from this condition x for which i uh, ordered that test the score value which is available in front of me now see this situation it's a, a two a curve you can see where you can see that the blue curve this one this deals with the healthy population and this orange curve this deals with the disease population and on the x-axis it is the test value the value of the cutoff which we have seen like 5 10 15 20 and on y-axis it is the frequency or the number of cases so you can see that the, the example which we have discussed there were uh, there was a clear although that was a hypothetical example but there was a clear cut cutoff value less than that cutoff value was having no disease and more than that cutoff value like 20 was having the disease so if you plot the curve of that hypothetical example the curve will be something like this so there won't be any overlap and there is a clear cut so if you like in this case this cutoff was 20 so this you can see this is the 20 line of 20 so all the cases more than 20 was suffering from disease and all the cases less than 20 was having no disease can you appreciate this fact in this uh, graph or should i repeat it once again it is just to exemplify that ideally if you think of a situation when there is no overlap and the cutoff value which we have decided based on the previous slides that you have seen that the 20 was the cutoff so i will have a perfect situation in which everybody more than 20 will have the disease everyone less than 20 won't have the disease 
yes and neeraj is right that although it is a very ideal situation but just we want you to appreciate this fact that this value based on this value you it, you can discriminate 100% which is a disease and which is not the disease now just see this case so you have ordered this test and the person was actually diseased but the value of the test comes as 7 we have decided that cut off as 20 but now the value has come as 7 similarly a person comes to you with with a complaint like in case number this uh, 22 with a value of 22 you have ordered that test and the value of the test comes as 22 and maybe if you have cross check that 22 was not having the disease but the 7 one was having the disease so what what will you call this 7 Uh, value as a false negative because this person is having the disease but ba based on your cut off of that value you have labeled that person as not having the disease right if i i i'll just go by the cut off value so i will label this person as a false negative now think of this person with a value of 22 if you go by the test value then i will label that person as a disease positive in the test positive this is a test positive so ideally this situation will be a false positive why the test is saying that the person is suffering from the disease x but in the real situation he is not having the disease rather he is healthy so the actual situation may look like this or the same there will be more of such numbers like you can see here the case number 15 again having a score of less than it's not the id means the value the 15 is again a diseased one where the score is less than 20 21 is okay 29 is okay but again then he, you can see 24 he is healthy but having a cut off more than 20 by that cut off we will say that he is diseased so you can see the number of false positive and number of false negative are increasing so from this hypothetical situation now if a person comes to you for consultation and that test value comes as 22 can you still say that he is suffering from condition x after seeing these two example of false positive and false negative can you still say so yes you are right that we cannot say now because we have seen that a person with a value of 24 was healthy and a person with a test value of 7 was also diseased like you can see again the same situation if the test value comes as 16 from this hypothetical population can you i mean this uh, and that person cons consulted you so can you say that he is not suffering from condition x so yes we cannot say so now we are not that confident previously we were saying very uh, clearly yes this person has got the disease and this person has not got the disease so what is the overall process so we are just want to speculate a person with a test positive really has the disease or not because that's that's the most important thing because then you have to start the treatment for the diseases so for a clinician who is sitting in his clinic the most important thing if the test value has come positive can i say that he is having the disease or not so for that there are other measures but actually in reality if you see this situation so we have seen in the previous example that the 20 cut off this 20 line which you can see there was no overlap but with previous example if i plot this graph then what will happen there there is a overlap so the test is diagnosing if i keep this 20 as a cut off there will be few individual who are diseased but they they are diseased 
and if you come they are healthy that if 8 and 6 these are healthy because these are with the blue line so these these are diagnosed as diseased based on the cutoff whereas if you see these two points rather these three points they will be diagnosed as healthy because the cutoff is less than 20 but actually they are diseased so there will be a false positive so this proportion will be a false positive and this orange one who has come as a normal this will be false negative am i making sense to all of you are you able to understand the concept of no overlap versus few overlap of the cases which naturally occurs in the population now you can see that it's a more overlap so it was the overlap was more in this case you can see the number of false positive if we see this cut of 20 so it has again increased so this graph has gone more here so this is this is the proportion of false positive because this 21 20 was the cutoff so all the cases after this 20 will be diseased based on the cutoff but these are not the diseased one so they will be false positive positive. and again again it may be like this that the false negatives also increased so this you can see that more cases are now falling here so 20 is the cutoff and now you can see that this is the frequency so 14 18 13 if you add this up total these many individuals were false negative ideally they were having the disease but if i go by the cutoff they were not having the disease so can i set up a cutoff point which can 100 percent discriminate between a person with condition x and a person without condition x that the discrimination between a disease and a healthy so i cannot set a cutoff so whatever cutoff i will take there will be some positive false positive and false negative i cannot say because there is a overlap so whenever there is overlap there cannot be any cutoff which have has a hundred percent discrimination who can discriminate between a person with condition x and without that condition x so in real situation we always misclassify few person but the cutoff value which we opt for that is based on the few parameters and that we'll see what are those few parameters so now this is again the pictorial uh, representation of the same graph which we have seen so you can see here the patient without the disease that is the green one and the red one is the patient with the disease and if i have set up the cutoff point in between so in that case this green will be the false if so if i set this this dotted line is that if i set up my cutoff level up till this point so if i set up my cutoff level to this point then what will happen this whole healthy person will be diseased so in this case this is a healthy but i will these will be the i will say that these all are diseased so this will be the false positive so more person without the disease will be false positive and then if i set a cutoff like this i if i increase the cutoff so in this case what will happen there will be more false negative because the diseased person i am classifying it as a healthy person so as you increase the as when you decrease the cutoff like in this case in this case what i was doing i have decreased the cutoff maybe if this line was 20 if you can say the initial this line was 20 i have reduced the cutoff to 15 so this will increase my sensitivity because now i will have all the diseased one but it will reduce my specificity similarly if i increase my cutoff it will increase my specificity but it will reduce my sensitivity so we have to make a balance between this sensitivity and specificity and I hope all of you now know uh, from your previous because uh, um, all of you are a well-read uh, people. So you know what is a sensitivity and specificity. So basically sensitivity is a true positive rate. So out of the disease positive, how many of the uh, them the test was 
said that it is positive. So this was the true positive, true negative is the specificity, true negative rate, and the opposite will be opposite to sensitivity will be the false positive rate and opposite to specificity will be the uh, uh, sorry, opposite to sensitivity will be the false negative and opposite to specificity will be the false positive rate. So these are the four uh, things which you need to understand with the uh, this concept, although in ROC, we will not use much of these concepts. We will only use the sensitivity and specificity to see the cutoff levels. So now a real situation remains much more complex where you can see that the diseased has a diseased people have got a value ranging from two to maybe the 29 or more than that 30. And again, a healthy is also behaving like he is having low score as compared to the uh, disease one, but uh, there is a person who is having a cut off, uh, the value of score is 30 also. So there is a overlap between these situation. So we need, we need some technique which can tell us the strength and weakness of each cut off point. And then we may decide for the best one because there is, there is no best. We have to see whether we want our test to be more sensitive or we want our test to be more specific, or we want the best combination of the two, when, when we can take the both sensitivity and specificity into account. So this technique of deciding a cutoff, which cutoff I should have for my test or my model, because I said that it is for the three, basically three functions uh, of this ROC analysis. So this overall deciding a cutoff or the predictive accuracy of the model or the equation which you have made, it is known as the ROC analysis. So the background of ROC, all of you know that it was originally developed during World War II. And when they used to classify the signal, whether it is a noise or whether it is a signal which is coming from a radar. So that was the, uh, and it was uh, during the World War II, which uh, has invented this. ROC. So ROC that cutoff they have decided that above that it will be a radar signal and less than that it will be a noise signal. So basically there are three uses of ROC analysis. We evaluate the performance of diagnostic test. We evaluate the accuracy of a predictive model like you made that model in uh, logistic regression. So we apply this ROC for that logistic regression also to see the area under the curve that the cutoff which you have taken. Ideally in logistic, the SPSS takes 0.5 as a cutoff. So based on that 0.5 cutoff of telling someone and, uh, uh, that he has the situation, he has a disease and he doesn't have the disease. So in that situation also, we can apply the ROC to see the accuracy of the predictive model. And it helps in taking decision of, uh, about the cutoff point. Like in case of a many psychiatric uh, and psychometric tool, we have got a lot of psychometric tool and based uh, there, we decide a cutoff of those psychometric tool. And that cutoff is also decided um, based on this ROC analysis. So this is uh, the same uh, concept which we have discussed as we move more towards the right because this discrimination threshold is the cutoff point. So discrimination threshold, this word we use for the cutoff point. So if you keep your cutoff point towards right side means you have increased your cutoff, then your sensitivity will reduce and your specificity will increase. And we have seen this, how it happens. This is again the same graph which you have seen uh, the um, false positive and false negative and changing the cutoff, how it can affect your sensitivity and specificity. So we want a cutoff where we can balance these two things, that is the sensitivity and specificity. And if you see the ROC curve, the more overlap the uh, curve, the more it is nearer to the diagonal line. So we'll see later, what do we mean by this diagonal line and how there, if there is a more overlap, you can see in the third one, this diagonal line is coming closer to the, the uh, this, uh, this line, the test line, it is the cutoff line, it is coming closer to the diagonal line and it has got a poor discrimination because there is so much of overlap that the test cannot differentiate between the person who has the disease 
and who doesn't have the disease. So now there are a few advantages of this ROC curve because it's a simple graphical representation of a diagnostic accuracy. In this ROC, you can have a ROC of one test also. And simultaneously, if you have got more than one test, like uh, uh, if you got two or three tests, then you can, allow, you know, you can compare also by seeing this curve, which one is the best, which has got the best discriminatory power. And this AUC is the area under the curve. So this area under the curve, which we uh, take in this, R, uh, this ROC, it is a non-parametric, hence it is unaffected by the population distribution. And based on some point and some technique, we can decide the cutoff points. So when do we use ROC? Basically, whenever for using the ROC, we should have the actual disease status of the person through some gold standard. And we will uh, make a binary variable that is the disease present or disease absent. So one thing is that we should have a binary variable and hence in that binary logistic, we apply the ROC because that is also a binary based on probability. We uh, uh, say that a person with a disease probability more than equal to 0.5 will be the diseased. And if it is less than 0.5, it will have no disease or the no outcome. And then uh, basically for model prediction also, the new uh, if I want to see the new diagnostic test result, what is the cutoff? So that is basically a continuous variable. So there is one variable, which is a categorical variable. Uh, that should be a binary variable, present, absent. And the second should be a scale variable or a continuous variable. In case of a logistic regression, it is the uh, probability, PRE1. If you can recall or we'll see that predicted uh, probability, which we click on the logistic regression, we make the ROC of that predicted uh, uh, probability with the situation which we have defined that binary one, that outcome present or outcome not present. So uh, that's the basic use of the uh, model prediction. And in model prediction, we use the predicted probability based on which we were deciding the group membership. So we uh, just plot the curve between that predicted probability and the actual status of the person. So it has got few characteristics. So basically this ROC, it is a plot of the true positive rate against a false positive rate. So true positive rate, we call it as a sensitivity because I have said that the true positive rate means out of uh, total positive, how many out of total diseased, how many the test was able to pick up. So this was the true positive rate. So it is a plot between the true positive rate against a false positive rate. The false positive rate is the one minus specificity. So basically it is the plot between a sensitivity and one minus specificity. The closer, the, the, in ROC curve, we get a graph. So that closer is uh, the graph from the top and the left hand border, the more accurate is the test. And the closer the graph to the diagonal, diagonal, the less accurate the test. And the test accuracy is shown by the area under the curve, which we call as the AUC. So this is one example you can see, this is a plot of sensitivity and one minus specificity. This is the, the red line, which is you can see here, that is a random line which we have uh, drawn it here. It is drawn from a, a coordinate 0, 0 and 1, 1. So if you draw a diagonal between coordinate this point 0, 0 and the other point as 1, 1, then we call it as a diagonal line and it has got a, this, uh, it divides this whole uh, graph into two parts. So any uh, plot, ROC curve coming into this area will be good and any ROC which is coming into this area will be poor. So basically the test with the random performance level, it is the straight line. This means this is uh, of no value because it will be a random. It will be like flipping a coin where the probability is 50%. So it's a straight line. And then the curve separates the space into two areas for good and poor performance level. And ROC is a point with a pair of X and Y value in the ROC, this ROC space. So this whole space is called the ROC space. And the graph and the curve which we get 
this ROC is a point with a pair of both X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And again, this ROC, which, uh, it is. So am I audible now? So this ROC, so it divides the area into the two part. So this ROC curve, it's okay. So it is basically uh, this diagonal curve, it divides this whole area into two part. All the curve, ROC curve coming uh, below this random line will be of poor discrimination and all the curve having this uh, uh, space uh, occupying above this random line will be of a good discriminatory power. And we can say that this ROC it's created when we join all the points of this ROC value. And this curve is generated through that. And I have told that this is the starting will be zero, zero, and the end points are defined as zero, uh, one and one. So these, this is the two curve you can see. So which one is the, uh, has got a better discriminate, discriminatory power, the blue one or the red one? So yes, all of you are right. It is the blue one because that blue curve is farther than uh, this, than this mm -hmm. diagonal line. So it has got more discriminatory power. So that, that gives a very visual impression and again this is the same thing that worthless excellent and good so yellow one is the excellent the more it is towards the vertical and the you know uh, away from uh, towards that vertical x that uh, y axis it will be more good so this accuracy of this roc curve it is measured by the area in the curve the area of uh, one represents the perfect test and the area of 0.5 represents the worthless test. So 0.5 area will happen when you uh, take this area, taking this diagonal, because this diagonal will give you the area. If we uh, take the triangle area, it is one into uh, half into uh, base into height. So if you divide because it is one, one, so this half into one into one will give you 0.5. So this area of the triangle taking this diagonal, this 90 degree is the 0.5. So this is a 0.5. So any line which is below this or which is uh, near to this is a worthless. And if the perfect line will be line which goes like this, this and this, then the area will be one. Because if you multiply 0.5 with this two, 0.5 into two, then this whole area will be one. Or you can take the area of a rectangle, one into one. So that will be a perfect uh, test with the area under the curve, the value of the area under the curve will be one. And then we can uh, do the comparison of more than one curve if there is a no crossing over. And then curve close to perfect ROC is having a better performance. So the area under the curve, we define this a situation where the patients are correctly classified into two groups. And the two groups Basically, we, if we pick randomly one sick person and one diseased person, I mean, one uh, uh, person from the diseased population and one person from the non-diseased. So what this area under the curve does, if we perform the test on both these individuals, so this area under the curve is the percentage of randomly drawn such pair for which the test accurately classify the two person, the person with the disease, and the person not having the disease. So basically AUC is the percentage of randomly drawn pairs. That pair will be one person from diseased person and one non-diseased. So the percentage of randomly drawn pair for which the test correctly classifies the two persons is known as the area under the curve. So the interpretation of this area under the curve is if it is 0.5, then it has got no discrimination. Like we saw that along the diagonal line, area under the curve of 0.5 represents the, the uh, that uh, it is along the diagonal line. So it has got no discrimination. It is, if it is up till 0.7, it is having 
poor discrimination. For area under the curve or for the test to be acceptable, it should have a value more than 0.7. So more than 0.7 is acceptable discrimination. If it is more than 0.8, but up till 0.9, it is excellent. And more than or equal to 0.9 is outstanding. So this is the value of area under the interpretation of the value of the area under the curve. So now there are two methods to find out the optimal threshold point. Because once you have decided, you have got a coordinate, each coordinate for each cutoff point. So you have got a sensitivity and specificity for each of the cutoff point. Then there are two ways to decide the uh, what point or what cutoff I should take. So the one is that is the D square. So it is the D square is equal to one minus sensitivity square plus one minus specificity square. So that should be maximum. And the second is the Udens index. So most commonly we use the Udens index. So we will discuss the Udens index, but you can use the first criteria also. Okay. And then for, uh, for uh, this calculation of this Udens index, we the prerequisite is that we should have a sensitivity and specificity at all the observed cutoff point. And we have got those values. There is an option. If you click that option, you get that sensitivity and specificity, particularly for all the cutoff point. So if you see the Udens index, it is a commonly used strategy. And this Uden, uh, it is described by a point J where we, if you add sensitivity and specificity and deduct minus uh, and deduct one out of it, that value, if it is maximum, it gives you the best cutoff. So this cutoff value is the maximum value of J. And this Udens index is important because it gives equal weightage to sensitivity and specificity. So that's why we use this Udon index to calculate the uh, cutoff point. So now coming to the SPSS. So this was the theoretical part. Now we'll go to the data and we'll see how it is done. Set. This is a variable view where you can see there's age, gender, race, cardiovascular status of the patient, where we have coded zero as no and one as yes. And then you can see the MI status. I'm coming to the question. What is the question? So MI zero is no and MI one is yes. This is a value of TROP T. I mean, disease status, if we take the TROP T as, uh, as a test, like positive and negative. And these are the three tests, test one, test two, and test three. Again, this MI score is a, some scoring category which I have developed, which I want to test. And this is again one predicted probability that is based on the that uh, logistic. We will see this also. So this predicted, uh, so this, this is the uh, variable view. And if you come to the data view, this is the data view. Uh, before I go to the data, let's see the question. So that, uh, so the researcher wants to test the diagnostic accuracy of three blood-based biochemical tests to screen cases of MI in the emergency department. Further, he or she developed MI score tool based on patient characteristics and wants to test its discrimination ability in MI cases. So this was my question. So this is the data. And in this, we don't have to do any assumption testing. So basically, first I'll show you with the this test one. So new test one, and then we'll see all three together. So I will go to the analyze. Then there is an option here in the, can you see or can, can uh, you see this ROC curve? So this ROC curve, if I click this, then this window will appear. In this case, you can see this is the test variable. This test variable will be a variable with a 
scale variable or the continuous variable. So I will shift this new test. So this new test one, it is categorical in uh, this thing. I think there was some mistake. So I'll go in the variable view and I'll change this because Uh, yes, ma'am. Now it's variable view visible, ma'am. So was it visible before? When no, ma'am. No. Now, now it's visible, ma'am. So uh, should I explain once more the all the things, all yes. the variables? Yes, okay. ma'am. It would be better, ma'am. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know how 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 it went off. No, never mind. So this is the variable view. We can see that the age, gender, race, cardiovascular disease status. So this is, uh, is zero and one. This again, MI status is zero and one. So zero is uh, no disease and one is yes disease. Then drop T is again one marker based on which we are saying that the person has a disease and this person has not the disease. And these are the three tests value. So these should be the scale variable. By mistake, it was uh, categorized as nominal. So here I have changed this to scale variable. And then you can see this is the MI score and predicted probability, which we see in the logistic. So these are the things, and if you come to the data view, then you can see these are the data. Uh, this is the data. I think this is the data of uh, 200 and 269 individual. So this is a 269 individual. So I am deleting PRE now, maybe, or just don't focus for this. So I'll go to this analyze, ROC curve. I have to test this uh, value of this new test one. I want to decide a cutoff for this. The state variable is the MI status based on this gold standard, whether that person will have the MI or will not have this MI. Here you have to give the value of state variable. So the one was means that the person was having the disease. And I have coded like that, that the zero says that the person is not having the disease and the one says that the person is having the disease. So I have coded this as one and then display in this ROC, it is with diagonal reference line. I have clicked this because I want this diagonal reference line. This standard, by clicking this standard error and confidence interval, it gives me the confidence interval of the area under the curve. And this coordinate points will give you the sensitivity and specificity of each cutoff point, sensitivity and one minus specificity of each cutoff means it is the X and Y. Basically, what are the coordinates points? It's the X and Y. So X is the sensitivity, X is the, sorry, Y is the sensitivity and X is one minus specificity because we have uh, seen that ROC, it's the plot between the sensitivity and one minus specificity. Ma'am, ma'am, so, ma'am. Yes, uh, Ashish. Yeah, I want to ask one thing. In the value of state variable, we have written one, right, ma'am? So what is one uh, implying over here? So if I go to this variable view, and this you see this MI status. So yes. So one says that the person is having the disease. Okay, so ma'am, whenever I will write anything in the value of state variable, I have to write that code that has the outcome, right, ma'am? Yes. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. And then you have to press this OK. So there's another, before you uh, press this, there's another, uh, this thing called option. So in option, you can see in this classification, it is by default, it is clicked because I am uh, taking the cutoff value for positive classification means above including that cutoff and above that. If somebody is having that score, he will be labeled as diseased positive. So this I say, I, if I exclude this cutoff value, that means that cutoff, if I have in that previous example, if I said that cutoff as 20, so it will be 20 will be there in the non-diseased one. So this by default, we take this cutoff value for positive classification. So I have left it like this. And this is the option for test direction. So it tells you 
about that the larger test result means the larger score means that the test is positive so if you are if you have got any test where the negative i mean the less score tells that it is a positive test then you can click this this option smaller test result indicate more positive test but in this case my if the score is more i will label that person as disease positive so the test direction is largest test result indicates more positive test so then i will press this continue and then i'll press this option of okay so i'll wait for a few seconds and then this will come so you can see in this case am i diagnosed this is the actual case the positive cases were 174 and the negative cases were 95 so if you come down this is the roc curve and we can see the area under the curve so since this this is lying in the upper part so i said that if it is lying in the upper part it has got a good discrimination and again you can see the area under the curve so the area under the curve is 0.722 and we said that this is the acceptable level of discrimination so 0.722 with the law uh, with the confidence interval it gives you the confidence interval and then coordinates now coming to this coordinates of the curve so here you can see that for each cutoff value it gives you a value of sensitivity and one minus specificity now i have to uh, calculate the yodans index because i said with this how will i choose a cutoff point if you can see here if i choose 16.5 as a cutoff this says that it has got a 16.9 percent of sensitivity but if you see the specificity specificity will be uh, this one minus 0.34 means it will be some somewhere 66 percent again if you come down so i am confused what should i take should i take a higher sensitive should i take higher specificity or should i take a value where i can take a moderate you know account of both the sensitivity and the specificity and we discuss that we do it by the calculation of udans index udans index is sensitivity plus specificity minus 1 so to calculate this i need to go i i, I will import this in a excel sheet because in this Excel sheet, because if the value is very large, if I got 1000, if it is a small value, then I can, I, I can calculate it manually. But since it is not possible to calculate uh, this manually, so I will, what I'll do, you double click this table, make a right thing, just a sec. Double click, then right click, and then there is a select, uh, there is an option of select special. So there is a copy special. So can you see? If you click this copy special, it gives you the uh, uh, this uh, option to copy this. So by default, it is in the image form. Can you see it is the JNG and PNG, JPG and PNG. Then the other options are also there, but I want Excel worksheet. So I have clicked this. I have unchecked that. And then I have clicked this OK. So if you click this OK, now if you go on the Excel sheet. So I have opened, maybe this is the Excel sheet. So what I'll do, I will paste it. So if you paste it, its color will come something like this blue and green. So I go to change, I, I'll go to this fill color and I have clicked this. So this has now become a normal color. So this on this sheet, I have to do the calculation. So what I have to do, the formula which uh, for your dense index is sensitivity plus specificity minus one. So if I do sensitivity, minus this value this will come like i have to do I, i'll show just a sec I, I need one blank slide so your dance index is this right so what will i do the column which i have i have column one that is sensitivity and 
I have to do the if I do minus and then I do the bracket one minus specificity. If I just deduct the second from the first, so what will happen? This will come as sensitivity plus this sign will be reversed. So it will be sensitivity plus specificity minus one. Is it okay to all of you? If you just deduct the one minus specificity from sensitivity, this formula of this sensitivity plus specificity minus one will come. Okay, so that's why what I will do in this Excel sheet, I will take this value and I will minus this value. So what I'll do equal to this value minus this value and I'll press enter and then I'll click for all the values. So I have got 269 values in this column so now i have to decide for the cutoff so either you can do one thing that you can keep on looking go down there will be a value where it is increasing so it is how come there are only 30 just a sec yes okay so whatever is a sample test one has got only 30 just a sec, let me see in that, there, there is some problem in that copy paste or what? Oh no, it is only, so it is the 30, uh, you have got this 30 value. So uh, if I go, you have either you can see like this. So if you see the maximum value of what we discussed, the maximum value of this Jordan's index will be my cutoff point. So the maximum value is what? 0.357 you can see this is the maximum because it has increased up till point this then again it has just started decreasing can you see so you go down and what is the value of that test of cutoff so it is 19.5 so that cutoff because this is the cutoff value the first column this is the positive if greater than or equal to so there are two cutoff value with 3.357 Newton's index. Yes, it can be there, but 0.357 is not this. Yes, there is 21.5 and there is a 19.5. Yes, you are right. So in that case, you may decide which, because Newton's index is same. So either you can have a cutoff value of 19.5 or you can have a cutoff value of 22.5. Uh, this 21.5 or what you can do you can have a categorical variable you can divide your because this that will give you the other values this is a point estimate of sensitivity and specificity now you need to calculate the 95 percent confidence interval of all the sensitivities specificity the positive predictive value likelihood ratios and etc so you can calculate uh, this with the two values 19.5 and 21.5 both and then you can decide which one you want to keep in your analysis okay so like in this case i have maybe i have taken this 19.5 you may take as 21.5 uh, again as a cutoff because you will see here that it's a we have discussed that it's a trade-off between the sensitivity and specificity yes that you can do that you can also calculate d2 and then which we have discussed that uh, one minus sensitivity square plus one minus specificity square. So you can calculate the D2 and you can say that both these D2 and U dense, the cutoff which is falling under satisfying both these criteria, then you can take that cutoff also. That is up to you. You just have to mention what you are doing in your manuscript. Okay. So yes, D2, because initially we did using both the methods but then later we thought that uh, you know that will be too much so just uh, show it with the one uh, this thing only so if you have again the same concept which we have discussed if you have a low cutoff it will have a more sensitivity uh, ma'am 
Ma'am, yes. uh, excuse me, ma'am. I just want to ask you one more thing. Can you repeat uh, this again? Like, which cutoff point we are using? Okay. And so, why are we using that cutoff point? Why are we using? I I will not say because that's a mathematical calculation. So okay, why we are, that that is a, a mathematical a mathematical okay, calculation. Okay, but how we are using it? Yes, yes I sir. can. Also. Like which point to select as a cutoff point? So that formula is the doctor uh, is the sensitivity plus specificity minus one. That first one. I am not telling you that d square now. I am telling you the U dense index first. So if you we take the U dense index, it's the maximum, and in the bracket the formula is sensitivity plus specificity minus one. So ma'am, in the Excel chart, this is what we did. Uh, we did uh, minus right, ma'am, uh, between sensitivity minus spec uh, one. Uh, one minus specificity yes 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 so that's what i showed now here that okay, if you if you do the sensitivity minus in bracket you keep one minus specificity which is the false positive error rate right so you uh, from the x axis uh, from the uh, yes from the y axis you deduct the x axis x axis is one minus specificity so if you see this this if you remove this bracket it will be the same formula sensitivity Plus, because this minus and minus, the specificity will become plus, and this one will become minus one. Did you get it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is just the removing the negative sign. If yes, you if you deduct the second column out of the first column, the same I did. Sensitivity minus. In the bracket, it was one minus. Just minus. multiply the minus in uh, all bracketed uh, this one. Means if you remove the bracket, this will be sensitivity minus one plus yes, specificity. Okay. So is it okay for all of yes, you sir. up till this point? Formula and how we did. Yes. Right. Sir. But yes, ma'am. But now, like we have calculated a J for every uh, uh, point estimate. So, ma'am, now every what? Cut -off. Every yes, cutoff. Every cutoff. Yes, ma'am. Now, out of these number of cutoff, which cutoff point to choose? Yes. How will we decide that, ma'am? That at that should be maximum. So, if you come, if you just see this, so it is point zero seven four point three. So this point three five seven. Okay, This is maximum. But there are two point three five seven. See, there is one here, and there is one here. Can you see? Yes, so which cutoff yes, should take 19.5 or 21.5? So you can decide based on your test uh, value. If you want more sensitivity, you will have a less cutoff. That's what we discussed. If you okay. want more specificity, you can take 21.5 because by Uden's index you are having two cutoff. Okay. So it's up to you. Or you can do another. There's another way which we have not uh, discussed in this session. I have told you regarding this also. uh that sensitivity there is one other way to calculate this and this is this formula like d square it is 1 minus sensitivity square plus 1 minus specificity square it's like pythagoras theorem remember that d square is equal to a square plus b square so this a the, the, this the, this the, the, it takes this 1 minus sensitivity square plus 1 minus specificity square it should be maximum so you can calculate this also but since it will have another one more calculation you will have to make a square so that will uh, complicate in the excel so because of that i we are not going into the detail but if you want to calculate this you can calculate this d square and you can see this uh, d square is maximum that will be your cutoff point okay so this is the cutoff now did you people understand up to i mean understand up till this point anything any ambiguities there then we can discuss otherwise i will go now because now i don't uh, we don't have the uh, we only have the point estimate of sensitivity and specificity we don't have confidence interval we don't have the value of the other diagnostic accuracy predictors so for that i need to do one more thing because the spss doesn't give you the value of confidence interval for the sensitivity specificity and the you know all the accuracy prevalence and uh, likelihood ratios so for that uh, what i need to do with this 19.5 so are you guys clear why we have chosen this 19.5 or 28.5 whatever you decide to choose
no response should i tell one more time 19.5 okay okay maybe 19.5 so now if 19.5 is there then what i'll do now i have to have i so what so 19.5 is my cut off value for that test so if i want to have the sensitivity and specificity and the other like positive predictive value negative predictive value and the likelihood ratios based on this 19.5 what will i do i need to have a 2 by 2 table based on this 19.5 cut off am i right because without that 19 remember that 2 by 2 table we make test a uh, result and then actual disease status and then we make a 2 by 2 table a b c d so what i'll do i'll go to the spss i'll create another variable so how to create another variable how to have a categorical variable out of a continuous one which option should i use who will tell me this transform Com transform compute transform compute or what Recode. That can be code into same variable. Recode into same different. Recode into same variable. Should I code it to into the same or should I code it into different? Different. We need to. We need to. We need one more now, ma'am. Different. If if I do it in the same, the original will be lost. Hmm. So it is always advisable to uh, recode into the different variable. That will save your initial continuous nature of the data. Otherwise, if you recode into the same variable. that new test one which you are seeing it this will be lost so you this transform compute can also be used but we have told you recode wala option so go to the recode into the different variable so input variable will be the new test one right so it will be the and means i want to have so i will what i will make this new test cat so i am making a new test one cat cat one or new test one cat i'll write because so maybe label i will write that category taking 19.5 as cut off i have labeled this variable like that maybe you can have another uh, name and then i have pressed this change now old and new value so the your new value is uh this is i will use that lowest through value so my lowest through value is 19.5 so 19.5 i want to have in the highest through so so what i'll do i'll code this up till 19.4 and then this value will be 1 so maybe i have coded it to 0 and then i have added this and this the other will i will use 19 because i want 19.5 to be included so lowest uh, this highest through i have told you the matlab of this through through means this value will be there it will take this value inside so that's why i have not put 19.5 here otherwise it would have taken this lowest this 19.5 in this uh, first category so this i have put it like one and i have added it and i will label it there in the so i have press this continue and then press this okay so i have a new category if i go to this so i have this new category and i will label this i'll go to this value i'll put zero as test negative this was the code and one because one was as positive this is disease positive and add and then i will press this okay so is it clear up till this point so, so then what will i do now i have to make a 2 by 2 table between this mi status and this new test one category so i'll go to this analyze i i'll go to this descriptive cross tab in this we uh, if you can recall that 2 by 2 table usually in the column we keep the disease status and in row we keep the test status 
So row, I will keep this new test category. In column, I'll keep this MI status category. And then I don't have to do any statistics because I only want this two by two table. So I'll press this and I have this two by two table. So in this two by two table, if you see this, now this is not A, B, C, and D. You have to make a two by two table because this 95 is the true positive. And this 18 is the false positive because, because the test is saying that it is positive, but there is no disease. Similarly, this is true negative because, uh, sorry, this 77 is the true negative. And this is the, because MI is there, but test is saying it is not there. So it is false negative. So what will be the A in this case? So all of you, please type, what is true positive in this case? So it is 95. Yes. What is false positive? False positive means that test has said that it is positive, but actually there was no disease. So false positive is 18. Yes. So Neeraj has written and the true negative is 77 and false negative is 79. So is it clear to all of you from this table, please see what is, uh, which one is what, right? And then now there is an option of med cal. So I'll go, there is another calculator. So this is the, we have given that link. So there is a med cal and it gives you the, so I will just, you can enter these value here. So this two positive A, this is 95. This is false positive. This is 18. This is false negative. This is 79. And this true negative is 77. So if you do this and disease prevalence, if it is known, you can keep. If you don't know, it will take this as a disease prevalence and then press this test. So if you press this test, this is, this is the value with the 95% confidence interval. So it will give you the value of sensitivity, specificity, positive likelihood ratio. It is very less. The interpretation of positive likelihood, it should be at least more than 10. A negative likelihood ratio should be less than 0.2. So it is less. The disease prevalence is 64.68. And it gives you the definition also, like which thing it has taken into the account. So you can go and uh, you can type these values in your table. These will be the, this accuracy is basically the true positive plus true negative divided by the total. So this is the accuracy. And these are the other uh, variable, these are the other diagnostic accuracy result with the 95% uh, confidence interval. So this way you can express your result. And if I go to the, AUC. Yes, AUC, I, I'm showing. Yes, okay, I have not shown you that two, three tests also. Let me, I'm going one by one. So AUC, we have seen, uh, it was 0.772, yes. This we have seen now uh, that it has got a diagnostic, that uh, the, uh, this uh, discrimination index was acceptable. And this is the curve. So this was taking the one uh, curve. So what was that AUC value? It is matching with accuracy. So AUC tells you the area under the curve, 63% shouldn't, shouldn't be the same. Now the calculation of these two, the area under the curve is calculated. Uh, it's not calculated like a, a straightforward one, this plus this divided by this, because it's a, the coordinate point, it is not in a straight line. So that, that is like uh, not calculated or uh, something like uh, a straight this thing. Whereas the accuracy is, so 0.77 means that the pair accuracy is 17, 77%. Yes, this is right because AUC tell, tells us uh, that the pair, 
yes but that was the accuracy of true positive and true negative that is 63% but that's that's the overall accuracy actually the accuracy which you see here in the table let me come to the table that is not for 19.5 see that area under the curve 0.77 it's basically tells you that that uh, has a uh, uh, you know that is not this 63% tells you with a uh, cut off value of 19.5 because we have uh, made that cut off value of 19.5 for calculation of 2 by 2 table but this area under the curve tells you the overall because we have not taken any cut off uh, right so these two are different things the area under the curve is the overall accuracy it's not the accuracy of that particular uh, cut off point because uh, the calculation which i showed you here let me come come to you that yes this one this is based only on that single cut off this accuracy so that area under the curve is different concept that gives you the overall estimate of the uh, you know discrimination power of the test whereas the accuracy which you see here that is on a specific cut off of 19.5 which we have taken for the calculation of 2 by 2 table is it okay i mean did you get what i i want to emphasize okay cut off is different from accuracy auc is the discrimination yes that definition is still holds that Uh, 77 uh, if it is 0.72 77 per pair i mean 72 percent of the pair it will correctly identify but that was the interpretation of auc and this accuracy is the true positive and true negative so we should see no 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 you don't need to see auc with 19.5 uh yes you can think and then we, we may discuss uh so are you guys okay up till this point all of you uh how to how to interpret because once you have decided a cut off you have to give the other diagnostic accuracy estimates based on that cut off so first you will give an overall roc area under the curve value its confidence interval then using uden's index you will calculate a value of j with that maximum value of j you will decide a cut off then you will make a 2 by 2 table so can we use auc to compare two test yes 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 i am coming to that pavan dr pavan we are still not uh, done so there are two more uh, functions of this uh, roc curve which we have to discuss so uh, if you are okay up till this point i'll go for multiple roc okay so let now i'll go again to this analyze roc so here are what i'll do i'll move all these two then again these will be the same i'm not changing it and then if you press okay you will see so you can see it's a multiple that i have used three test new test 1 new test 2 and new test 3 you can see it it gives you a test value of like it is 100 to 500 100 to and this is the uh, 5 to 30 so which curve is better in this yes so it is the green one because we know that the higher this is and this you can confirm from the auc also it gives you the auc you can see that this has got the 0.875 new test 2 and if you see this green one this is the new test 2 right this is the highest so this this area under the curve tells you the discrimination discriminatory index or the discriminatory power and highest the value of this auc larger is the discrimination uh, discriminatory index or discriminatory power and then again you will have a cut off this coordinates individual coordinates for all the three test so now you may decide if that you will use this new test too and then again you have to repeat the same process for new test too right so how will you do that you will copy this whole there in the excel sheet you delete uh, this uh, the upper row or if you choose not to delete you can calculate and then you can see the 
new test value. The highest J point of this new test value will give you the cutoff point. You make a categorical variable taking that cutoff point, make two by two table, and then you predict the other, you tell the other DAG in uh, the other uh, results of your uh, diagnostic accuracy predictors like positive predicted li likelihood ratios and etc. So this was regarding more than one test. Now coming to that logistic regression. Remember in logistic regression, we discussed regarding the predicted probability and the group membership. So there it has taken 0.5. So uh, what I'll do, I'll go back to my ROC. Sorry, this uh, logistic. So logistic, this was the, in logistic, what we were doing, we were seeing the F stat maybe. So what I'll do, I'll go, I'm not checking any assumption now, just to tell you, I'm, uh, I'll go to the, so I'll go to this binary logistic. So my categorical was this one, dependent. And maybe in the independent, maybe I, I, I took that age, gender. Now I'm not going into the discussion, which variable should I take here? So maybe I have taken these three variables just at random based on the other, that univariate and other ways I have taken these three, right? I, I will describe this categorical. Maybe I have changed the, this as a first category and then continue. So in that same, you know, we have this predicted, I want this predicted probability. So I have given, I have clicked this predicted probability. There's uh, again, there's no need to click this group membership now because uh, I just want to see whether the cutoff of 0.5, what is the diagnostic accuracy of that cutoff? So I will click this, I will click, okay. And now I have got a, in that, uh, Logistic regression, if you see, I have got this predicted value. So I have to now plot this predicted ROC between this predicted value and this F stat. F stat. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll go to the analyze ROC curve. I will put this F stat here, this predicted here. The value of F1 was. You can see once again in the coding, if you, uh, because so F stat zero was alive and one was dead. So my, this thing is, I was predicting death. So I have, that's why I have kept it as one. And then I'll click all these three and these options you have explained you, then I, I pressed okay. So if I pressed okay, you can see that the area under the curve of this predicted probability is 0.728. Right. So this point, this model, the predicted model, which I have taken as a age, gender, and maybe smoking status, it, 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 it has got an acceptable discriminatory power, which is 0.728. Right. So this you can quote when you do the uh, logistic regression, you can plot the ROC taking the pro predicted probability and the outcome, and then you can report that the model, the uh, predictive accuracy of your model. So we have seen this, you can uh, have, and this same, the test, there's, there's one more uh, uh, use of this. You can see this MI score. So here you have seen the test. This MI score is also, we will use the same thing because I have developed this new score and I want to see which one is the, uh, which one will have the, uh, above what value I can say that the person was having the disease. So for that also what I'll do, I'll go to the analyze, I'll go to this ROC curve. Here what I'll do, I'll shift all these three to this place. I'll take this MI score. The rest will be the same. I'll press OK. And then if you see the output, so this output so this, see, this is the, it has got a good discriminatory power. So this was uh, the ROC curve. If you see the discrimination, this is 0 0.841. So it, is got, it has got a good uh, this area under the curve. And then this is the coordinates. 
So for the coordinates, again, what I'll do, I'll right click this, I'll press this copy special. I will click this Excel worksheet. I will uncheck this. I will press OK. I'll go again here. Maybe you may open a new sheet. And then I will paste. If you paste this, again, I need to change this color. And what I'll do, I'll click a formula. This minus this, enter, and then this. And then you can see that which is the highest. So highest is, which is the highest uh, J point J in this. Please write in the text box, chat box. What is the cutoff based on this? Please tell me the cutoff. This is the highest. What is the cutoff which I should take? That score. Which cutoff, which uh, value of score I should take? So yes, it is 0. 0.5.5. That is my that will be my cutoff. 80%. So you can see it is 80% sensitivity and approximately 80% specific. And again, like if you want point estimate and other thing, then again, I need to go back to this. I'll create another variable. What I'll do, I'll go to this. I'll go transform, come recode into the different variable. I will take this, I'll do this reset. I'll do this MI score. This, the name will be cat, MI cat. And then I'll change this and this old and new value. So th that was the lowest through, it was 5.5. .5. So I will keep here 5.4. I will give this the value of zero. So this will be my healthy and then highest through I'll keep as 5.5. .5. So then I'll keep it a value of one, add it, continue. Okay. So I'll go back to my sheet and see whether this has converted or not. So there is a category. Again, I'll go to the variable view. I'll label this because I don't know. So zero will be my negative disease negative and i have added this one will be positive and i have added this then i'll go to the analyze i'll press okay i go to the analyze descriptive like this the cross tab so i have to now MI status, I'll move this, MI cat. Rest, I only want two by two table. So again, the two positive, two negative. So the two positive will be 140, false positive will be 20, the two negative will be 75, and the false negative will be the 34. So enter this value in Metcal, and then you can have the, that uh, point estimate, okay? So are you guys okay up till this point? Any, any ambiguity, any commands which you want me to repeat? All that, all this has been given here. This uh, is also given that, uh, and I think, yes, then interpretation is left. So how to write? So this was the, And this is the way it, all it has. I mean, we have written for all the three tests, the cutoff value for all the three, the AUC significance, then again, the sensitivity specificity and the ROC curve of all the three. And then there is a write up that we did the ROC analysis for the three tests and test two have the highest value of AUC followed by test one and test three. The cutoff value of each test was estimated two by two table. And then you can just show this, right? You can write and you can express this. So this was the ROC and deciding for a cutoff. Ma'am, I have one question. Yes, Ria. Uh, Ma'am, uh, in the last uh, ROC curve that you did, like in the MI score, like mm -hmm. we are dividing it into uh, like present, absent. Or what if uh, we have like three categories or oh, more than two categories? If we have like for a test, like it does have. It does have a test like normal, borderline, and abnormal, those kind of scores. If you want to do an ROC analysis there, so what do we have Generally, to do? 
generally for roc that one it will only tell you about the present or absent in that you have to do that pair wise in that case okay ma'am okay so that's a separate thing we may take it some other time but then you have to do that pair wise okay ma'am thank you okay okay then if uh, there is no query then we may yeah. navin also there is there in way to find the actual value of sensitivity and specificity for any cutoff by moving the pointer over roc curve so i don't think that coordinates it gives you there is a you have that individual cutoff na i'll show you in this output if you see you have got the each value on that roc curve i don't think because that roc is made in the software so on that roc i don't think that you can find clicking on each uh, i have not explored that option maybe let me explore because maybe by clicking double clicking this and seeing the coordinates maybe you can find out dr neeraj but i have not looked i mean we have not uh, looked into this option so we may give us some time maybe if you have raised this question we may look into it uh, but uh, this table gives you that set of cut off but yes definitely i think that it should give because this graph is made on that individual uh, coordinates for each uh, making so many cut offs so i think it should come but right now uh, i am not in a position to explain this so maybe uh, in the next session or maybe during the chat we can uh, show you okay so if there is or in the breakout if tell you guys are busy in your breakout room let me explore this okay then we may uh, explain it further so uh, i we were just exploring that option of uh, what dr neeraj asked regarding that question of roc and the individual point so in that we tried but it it is not possible to see the uh, individual cut off point i'll 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 show you one thing like if you plot a scatter plot like i i'll go to the chart builder and uh, there is a option of chart label are you sharing your screen oh sorry sorry i think i didn't no issue i'm sorry i i usually do this mistake i'm sorry so now can you see this screen now all of you yes yes sir okay i'm i'm extremely sorry uh, so this uh, what we can do uh, we can go to the, this graph i'm just showing you because uh, the underlying concept also we could understand why it is not showing so maybe this scatter plot if i have just we because we scatter plot we draw it very frequently so if i plot a scatter plot of maybe age and maybe i'll take one more maybe that this predicted one so this pre and if i press okay then you have in this output you have got a scatter plot so if you double click this and go to this there's a option of data label so if you click individual data there is some problem with my spss this graph so if you can see this a case number 128 149 so if you click this individual case number comes and you can directly go from here also so this comes because it's the individual case and it has plotted this case but with roc what is the problem that this roc if you see this roc the coordinates basically here at each cut off point if you see this table so at each cut off point in the background it is calculating the sensitivity and one minus specificity and these are the two coordinates so these are not the cases rather because that data label option that comes when you have got the individual cases but here since it is calculating based on a, a particular cut off point the commands it has been set like that the commands in the spss so for each cut off it is giving the sensitivity and specificity so all that coordinates so maybe that this roc must have been drawn using 1 2 3 4 5 6 these many numbers of x and y so that's why by clicking i tried hard but we could not find any way to see right now to see like moving on this axis can i find this maybe with this version and in spss maybe i don't know about because we have got 22 i don't know about higher version and maybe some other packages like stata or uh, sas uh, 
I have no idea, but we could not uh, explore this option of, uh, you know, moving along this uh, curve and uh, telling the uh, coordinates of uh, this ROC. Uh, yeah, ma'am, uh, regarding the uh, like uh, practice uh, we did in the session, breakout rooms, am I audible, ma'am? Uh, yes, yes, Dr. Poonam. Yeah, ma'am, uh, like uh, we, uh, when uh, we have done that sensitivity and specificity through, through MedCal, we got for that particular cutoff point, we got sensitivity of 48%, ma'am. Okay. And when we look at the ROC, it was 0. 0.7. So, I delete. No, no. Have you ended no, no, up true positive? This is the same, same query for which I came to you. Uh, in that, uh, Dr. Poonam, it was like that, that uh, with the cut of 45, the coordinate, the sensitivity uh, was like uh, 100%. And when we calculated in the MedCal, yeah, the specificity was 100%. So have you so, entered that true positive, true negative correctly? Uh, yes, ma'am, we did. Actually, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, ulta ho gaya, ma'am. You, because now you, the table which you get here, that is different from the true positive, true negative. So before that, please check. And if you have understood, maybe there may be some problem with the data, but I think those should uh, be the same because it is using the same data set to classify. So if you have the same, same ara hai. actually jo spaces ka two by two table, the spaces two by two table that is that are true positives are shown in the uh, bottom corner. And the uh, four, that's what uh, I said. Na, ki agar tum isko, you re remake this table. Uh, roughly uh, by selecting the true positive, true negative, false positive and false negative, enter the value. I think redo, uh, redo it. I don't think there should be any reason of coming these two values separately. But still, we will check it from our end. Once no, again. no, ma'am. Most like, ma'am. Most likely, we had mistake in putting the values of those true positive, true negative. We did mistake in that. That's why it is coming opposite. Okay, we'll check. We'll check. All of us will check it once again. I don't see any reason for this, but if it is happening, we'll have to look into this matter. But right now, just focus on the process. Like this is the way we do it. And like there is a limitation I have told you in the SPSS that it doesn't give you the confidence interval. So that's why we need to do it separately. Other Maybe with the newer version, I don't know if somebody is having the 28 or the latest. We have got no idea regarding those options available with the recent version. So, uh, Dr. Poonam, we'll again yes, check sir. once again. Yes, sir. we will check, in. check it. And if there is any problem, then we'll again revisit to this concept. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, any query? Uh, okay. I was aware. Excuse me. Ah, yes, Dr. Neeraj. Yeah, uh, I was aware that the other way of looking at this point of interest, that what should be the cutoff, okay. that you take a point which is closest to the, in the ROC curve, you take the point, then can you go to the ROC curve part? Yes. Ah, thank you. So the point which is closest to the top left corner. Yes, that's the theoretically, it says the top le left, the closest. Mm -hmm. okay. But in the curve, it is very subjective, whom to decide. And how will you decide? So the way which has been shown, that is a bit objective way of doing that. That is, okay. theoretically, you are correct. And it's written everywhere that the most left, that's why, because that, this is the ideal. If a graph goes like this and this, when the area of AUC is one, this would be the ideal one. But point, how will you take it is very difficult, especially if you have got like, uh, different, different curves, different shape of the curve, then by the taking those values and thinking it will be more subjective, whereas this Udens index and that uh, one minus sensitivity square plus one minus specificity square, they are a bit objective way of doing it. But uh, in the same way, but it should not be the highest uh, value. Like if we want to take cutoff at, at all, it should not be the highest value. No, it uh, generally that's the recommended one. But highest value means highest cutoff or highest J point you are saying. Which highest are you talking of? Highest J point. It should be the highest. That's the most common way of doing it. It's the highest 
maximum value of that j um truly speaking logically i don't know what is right and wrong but logically this point on this blue curve which is closest to this one top left corner let's say uh, i'm just approximately telling this may looks like to me around the sensitivity if we take this point the sensitivity will be around 0.83 or 0.84 and one minus specificity if we draw a vertical line will be somewhere around 0.25 or so yes 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 this one so yes. ah, so this should be the specificity and so now this point at which the sensitivity is 0.83 or 0.84 and one minus specificity is 0.25 so this is the point that at this point we need to know what is the actual cutoff that cutoff is uh, uh, means whatever the value is yes yes that you have that Actually, you can... that is that should be the point but when we are calculating through this uh, jordan's index i don't think so that we are getting the same thing yes because you are talking about it could be 9.3 9.25 9.21 but jordan index it just jumping from 9 to 9.5 Five. Huh, that's very much surprising. That why it is doing okay. So. Okay, that, that, that's that is the issue with SPS. What what we are saying right now that even if you are getting your index and you are not satisfied, suppose you want your test to be ninety five percent sensitive, okay. and you are ready to compromise on specificity. As a researcher, you are totally free to decide your cutoff point. You will say that. for this test i am more interested in sensitivity part and i am ready to compromise for specificity in this argument you are totally free to decide your cut off point of choice there are many ways to decide the cut off point of choice one is subjective looking at the uh, uh, the distance your dangs then this one then there are some certain dynamics points and there are, last one is your preference Like in this, see, uh, in this case, I, also, I, I got my answer because the point which you are saying is absolutely right. In fact, I am now critically seeing. If you see the point I was trying to highlight, actually, one point eight three here and point two five, and that was the cutoff which we calculated four point five. This one, now you want to say this? Uh, so logically, also like looking at the curve, yes, yes. yes. looking for point eight three and point two five. This itself has uh, calculated as four point five. I See, Doctor Neeraj, actually, what happens because uh, you know all these researches, the, the this these Uden's index and all these, this has been the addition into the previous uh, literature. So they keep on revising the thing, uh, devising new things, so that it becomes easy for the researcher to calculate. But if you can calculate by seeing it uh, that curve, it is up to you. Classically, it has been uh, defined like that only. which you are doing it by seeing that curve but since all of us doesn't have that you know uh, sub, uh, sharp subjectivity i means it it may vary and in that case if you use this also so you can have more than one way also like like i said you can uh, decide objectively like we do for normality testing there also we were taking a two three cut off we we take the histogram we the, see the qq plot we take the shapiro well and there are many other uh, things also so you may take more than one similarly that thing we are doing for many like you know we could uh, put in that uh, log rank breast love also we were taking more than one test so uh, in that vif and all also by saying that one particular thing is an outlier we are taking more than one criteria so similarly here also you can take more than one criteria and the bottom line is this what is your ultimate aim if you want your test like we have seen increasing right or uh, uh, by reducing the cut off you are compromising on uh, specificity and by increasing the cut off you are compromising on sensitivity ultimately it is a balance which you have to decide and if you think that you can do it by this way that's perfectly fine there is no problem at all we are telling one of our experience dr neeraj that sometime you will find a coordinate through your index you find that sensitivity is 90% and specificity is 60% but if you can reduce a lower cut off if you are compromising a sensitivity for 2% less 88 but it may increase the specificity by 15% 75% in that case you will go for your personal decision it may happen that it 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 we said na ki as you increase or decrease sensitivity specificity also will either decrease or increase but this increment and this decrement 
will not run parallelly. Sometimes it happened that you have decreased sensitivity by two units, but specificity may increase by 20 units. So that is so a win-win situation. See in this example, there are three cutoffs, 4.5, 5.5 and 6.5. So if you see the sensitivity and specificity is approximately 83%, 80%. If you take any of these two, and if you see the specificity also, it is approximately maybe 76% here, and it is maybe 79% here. But if you go here, here the specificity increases. It's it's it's, uh, it's again, there's no much more increase. This gain is not there. So if you want to take this, if so how to decide between this 4.5 and 5.5? Because there is a very less, in this case, you will be losing on sensitivity but will you will be gaining on specificity right so that's but there is a very narrow margin so you can put all these things in your discussion while you are writing the paper because you have now one way so you can either take this way or you can do that whatever you are suggesting the only thing is uh, it's up to you there are ways and everybody has suggested there are various ways of doing it but still like that exponent in the, the it's not increased like the way proportionate increase or decrease is not there so like dr shamshad said that if there is any point whereby just increasing one cutoff if you are gaining on something tremendously by losing something it's the trade off remember it's the trade off so that trade off you have to decide so it's not the only way you didn't index if your subjectivity again you have to put your analytical power and if you think that you didn't index yes, is giving the a cutoff where uh, if you take some yeah, other cutoff there will be gain in sensitivity more and if uh, your test requires that then you may choose that cutoff no issues i agree no, I agree with both of you in fact uh, that will primarily depend on uh, the research question so if i'm trying to develop a test basically for a screening tool i try to have much more sensitivity Whereas if I'm trying to as a more of a diagnostic tool, I'll try to more be on more towards the specific. I completely agree. So that's a trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. And we, we have not gone into, the, yes, yes. We have not gone into detail of those sensitivity and specificity, but we know we understand that all of you know all these concepts. That's why uh, uh, this discussion is going on. So ultimately, again, it depends, like uh, you said, uh, whether it is a disease which where that you know, if it is a breast cancer, or we know where the even the if you increase the cutoff, but if you decrease the cutoff and if you're losing on some patient, which is a fatal disease, then obviously you will reduce the cutoff and your sensitivity is at most important. You must have done, and there are ways to handle that also. Now you must have read about the test in series and test is in parallel. It is not the only single test. For something like that, you do all those things also, which we have not discussed here. Like if you uh, want a more specificity, then you may run a test in series. If you want more sensitivity, then you may run the test in parallel, like we do for the TB and we do for the HIV. Because if some uh, the disease is having a social stigma, then we want more specific tests to be there. We cannot label a person to be HIV positive unless and until we are too much sure. So that specificity is important. So again, the the bottom is the uh, what is what do I intend to do? So all that thing we have not discussed, but I hope with this the, the, with this discussion, uh, uh, the uh, uh, you you have this clear idea uh, what to take into account. Yes, sir. thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you so to all of you. We are meeting. Uh, so we are week. meeting on next Saturday, right? With for two way and over, and in between that we will keep on uh, all those chats going on in the uh, main group. So uh, it's good that you raise your questions and uh, through your questions, we have again uh, said this earlier also, that we also learn, we read and then we again get back to you and we also explore options and you also keep on exploring exploring things like if you have missed, like Dr. Neeraj said that you will look, look up for those coordinates. If you could find anything, all of you, you can share it, it with us also because it's an open forum. All of us are learning every day. So uh, nothing is uh, ultimate. We are you know, building on our existing knowledge, all of us. So it is requested that if you, if you have uh, faced any new thing or if you have come up with a new concept or anything new, uh, kindly share it with us also. So it will be a two-way exchange of knowledge. Okay. So then good day to you, all of you. And then see you on next Saturday. Thank you. Thank you so much.